Hello guys, welcome to the next video in our cyber security series. Today we are diving into the two important areas, ethical hacking and social engineering. Ethical hackers helps us to find and fix the vulnerabilities before malicious hackers can exploit them. Okay. And uh, social engineering on the other hand is all about how attackers manipulate the people rather than machines to gain unauthorized access. By the end of this video, you will uh, understand both these concepts and how they affect the cyber security. So let's get started. Okay. So at first, the ethical hacking concepts and the scopes. Ethical hacking is when authorized individuals known as white hat hackers attempts to break into a computer system to find and uh, fix the weaknesses. Okay. Unlike the malicious hackers, ethical hackers are hired by organizations to improve the security. They use the same tools and techniques as cyber criminals, but their goal is to prevent the attacks, not cause them. The scope of ethical hacking includes the testing a company's network, software and hardware. Ethical hackers often perform the penetration test to see how far they can get inside into a system, identifying the issues before the real attackers do. Okay. So now the threats and attack vectors. A threat is any danger that could exploit a vulnerability and cause the harm to a system or data. Attack vectors are the paths or methods that attackers use to carry out these threats. Okay. So Common attack vectors include the malicious emails like the phishings, the software vulnerabilities and insecure password. Hackers can also use the social engineering to trick the people into the giving them access. By understanding different types of attack vectors, we can better to protect our systems by standing with the weak spots, knowing what could help or what could happen helps in preparing and preventing the breaches okay so now the information assurance information assurance focuses on ensuring the availability the integrity and the confidentiality of the data information assurance is about making sure that the right people can access the right information when needed and that the information remains accurate and safe from tampering or loss. This is done through strong security measures like the encryption, the authentication and regular backups. Organizations depend on the information assurance to protect the sensitive data such as the customer records or the company's secrets, ensuring that data stays secure and trustworthy at all times. So now the threat modeling. Threat modeling is a process used to identify, understand and manage the potential threats to a system. It's like creating a map of possible attacks before they happen. Companies use the threat modeling to predict how an attacker might try to break into their systems. This involves analyzing how data flows through the system and where the vulnerability might be. Once the threats are identified, solutions can be created to stop them before they cause harm. This proactive approach keeps the security tight and prevent the surprises. Okay. So now the Enterprise Information Security Architecture, EISA. It is a framework that helps the large organizations to build the secure systems. It involves designing and implementing the security measures across all parts of a business from employee access to security or to securing the network data. The goal is to make sure that all parts of the organization are protected and that security measures are consistent across the different teams and the technologies. So, Enterprise information security architecture helps the companies to prevent the breaches and manage the risk by creating a strong foundation of security across their entire system. Okay. 
So now the vulnerability assessment and penetration testing. A vulnerability assessment is a process of finding the weaknesses in a system. Once these weaknesses are identified, a penetration test or the pain test is performed. Pain testers often ethical hackers attempt to exploit the vulnerabilities to see how much damage can be done. The purpose is to find the security gaps before the real attackers do. So both assessment and pen tests are essential for maintaining the secure systems as they reveal the potential weak points that can be patched or fixed to prevent the future attacks. So now the social engineering. Social engineering is when attackers trick the people into giving away the sensitive information or the accesses. The common types of social engineering include the phishing where attackers send the fake emails pretending to be from to pretend it to be from the trusted sources and pretexting where they create a false scenario to steal the information. Baiting involves offering something attractive to get users to click on malicious links. Okay, tailgating happens when someone gains physical access to a secure area by following an authorized person. These attacks focus on human psychology, making them highly dangerous. Okay. So now the insider attack. An insider attack occurs when someone within an organization uses their access to steal the data or the damaged systems. This type of attack is especially dangerous because the insider already have permission to access the sensitive areas. Insider attacks can be motivated by personal grievances, financial gain or even blackmail. Employees who feel distinct wishes or the overlooked may pose a threat. Okay. So monitoring the access and having this strict security protocol can help to reduce the risk of insider attacks by catching the suspicious behavior early. Okay. So now the preventing the insider threats. Preventing the insider threats require a mix of uh, security measures and workplace culture. Organizations need to limit the access to the sensitive information, making the sure that the only employees who need the data can access it. Means the role-based access control can help to ensure this. Monitoring the systems for unusual activities is also important. Additionally, creating a positive work environment can discourage the dis disgruntled employees from turning into the insider threats by making the employees feel valued and involving them in security training. Companies can lower the risk of the insider attacks. Okay. So now the social engineering targets and defense strategies. Social engineering attacks typically target the individuals who have uh, access to the sensitive information such as the executives or employees in the finance or the IT. Defense strategies against the social engineering involve training the people to recognize the suspicious behavior and be uh, cautious about sharing information. Strong password policies using the multi-factor authentication and uh, verifying the request for the sensitive data are key strategies. Regular security awareness training can also help employees to become better at spotting the phishing attempts or the other manipulation tactics. Okay. So that's the of our discussion on ethical hacking and social engineering. Ethical, ethical hacking plays a huge role in preventing the cyber attacks. While social engineering is one of the most dangerous tactics used by cyber criminals today. Always remember, cyber security is not just about protecting the systems, but also about educating the people. So in the next video, we will uh, discussing the cyber forensic and auditing, how investigator attacks the cyber criminals and ensure the system stays secure. So see you in the next time and thank you for watching. Okay.